Hi guys, welcome to uh, Insert Coin to Begin Presents Let's Play Episode 2. I'm your host, Chachi, joined this week by uh, contributors Bobby F. James, J, J Town. Hi, everybody. I stuttered on the J. <laughs> and uh, Fuzzy, Fuzzy, Fuzzy's up there. Hey. He's not fuzzy because it's summer, but that's fine. <laughs> I let it slide. Um, so, uh, what this is, is it's a quick format. Uh, question answer type show we cover certain topics every week they vary uh each topic has a time limit and the first question every week is what are you playing slash did you play the challenge bobby yes i did play the challenge it was pretty fun uh, uh just to I, remind just to remind the people the challenge was infectinator 2 where you are an evil scientist using zombies to take over the world go ahead bobby i infected many people did you beat uh, the game? No, I didn't. I didn't beat the game. Uh, I just I played it a little bit here and there when I had some time. Um, I'm actually playing, still playing Trials uh, Evolution, and I'm uh, playing Cut the Rope religiously on my phone. <laughs> How uh, can you it's not? still, it's still awesome. <laughs> it is still awesome. I I play it all the time. <laughs> all of the time, Frank. I gotta say, wait, wait. There was a. Uh, um, I, I'm sorry. There was a. There was something that came up on my free app of the day that was like cut the button. That looked like a horrible cut the rope. Oh, I'm sure. I had to throw that out there. There was chicken ninja on today. Yeah. For wow. Amazon. <laughs> All right, uh, Frank. Okay. Uh, what I'm playing, I finished up Assassin's Creed Revelations, um, the main storyline. I'm just going through doing some of the side bits. Uh, just picking up a few more xbox achievements and god help yeah, me just, if you're collecting feathers i'm gonna jump through the computer and beat your i, no, I will beat you uh, to um, a pulp animus fragments actually. Oh, okay all right that's fine uh and i'm going <laughs> to finally get around to finishing afro samurai then once once i'm done diddling about in revelations just because uh afro samurai it's just such a fun game but it's challenging at times Did you have something to say, Sork? I just want to know if Sam, uh, Samuel L. Jackson does a voice in it. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. It's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> that makes it worth it. Yeah. That's, right. that's, the the giant, that's the greatest quality about that game. Because he is just full of so much sarcasm, just making fun of you the whole way through, and he's your guide. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, I've been on week on uh, vacation for a week, and surprisingly, I didn't play that many video games. Um, I did a lot of other stuff that I've been meaning to get done. So, I mean, it, it was a, it was a good vacation. Uh, so honestly, I only played an hour of actual video games. I played, uh, Hacker Evolution Duality this week. Um, it's a, uh, a game where you play a software programmer who doesn't want to be a software programmer anymore. So now you do missions hacking into computers across the globe. And I've also play been revisiting, um, the all-time classic, never-get-old um, video game called Dope Wars. <laughs> Don't it, uh, it, you can't you can't deny the fact that you've never played Dope Wars. Yeah. You liars! Seriously, I've never done it. I've you never are all it. liars. I've never played it. <laughs> I, no, neither have I. Seriously, I hear, I hear it's oh. dope though. Are you guys on Android? <laughs> yeah. Fine. Yeah. That is the challenge for this week. You are to play Dope Wars. Okay. Okay, good. I, he I hear it's dope. It is. <laughs> I can't, I, seriously, I can't believe you guys have never played that game. You never guys played it. Bad gamers. Bad <laughs> gamers. Bad gamers. Uh. I would smack your nose with newspaper. <laughs> um, all right, so in case you haven't noticed, the questions go on time limits. Each week, we switch up the questions. This week, I let Frank come up with questions, and he came up with some pretty good ones. Um, so the first two questions get five minutes each. Then we have the boss fight, which is the major discussion of the episode, and it gets whatever time is left. Uh, so, round one. What game would make a better novel than a movie? Frank? Um, I'm going to have to say Assassin's Creed, just because I was thinking about that whenever the question was asked about what game would make a great movie and there's honestly too much in assassin's creed to even attempt to make a movie out of it you'd have a, a seven volume movie <laughs> just for each of the games but to put it into a novel that would be fantastic 
because yeah, it, I think that that way you'd be able to really explore some of the more intricate de- details. You know, put out a thousand page book, people are going to read it because it's such a good storyline. I could see that being like a uh, a Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings type uh, book series, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially with the story of the Animus and all that stuff woven into like the all the other stuff. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah, you'd be able to do all kinds of offshoots then for other different conflicts. And also, it'd be good for people who don't have a PS Vita, which um, the uh, the Assassin's Creed uh, minigame that's coming out before Assassin's Creed 3 that takes place in New Orleans. If you don't have a PS Vita, you aren't going to get to play it. Right. So mm-hmm. put a book out about it so you can at least have that little bit of storyline in your head if you're like me and you have an Xbox. Correct. All right, Bobby? Uh, my pick would be L.A. Noir. Why? Um, I, I just think with all the, the twists and turns in the story, in the story um, just how it's set up like a detective story, working your way up, the telling the story of Cole working his way up through the ranks of the uh, LAPD in the time period. I think it was... a the 30s or 40s. Uh, I think that would be a really cool book. I don't know if it would work as a movie. Um, wouldn't it, it may work as both, but... Wouldn't that be like a Donnie Brasco type? Kind of like that, yeah. So, I mean, it would work as a movie. I like, I like, I like Confidential, I guess, yeah, but I, I think it would be a good book, too. Okay. Um, I picked uh, Hacker Evolution. Um Hacker Evolution is this game put out by a small uh, game developing slash publisher in England called IntroVision, and they they've done a few games. Hacker Evolution. They released a global thermonuclear war game, and uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But another game where there's a society inside of uh, computer systems, and you have to uh, fight the viruses to keep the society going. I, um, uh, explain the gameplay a little bit because uh, the screens I'm getting in these videos are pretty low key. I could say. Uh, is it bl- is it blue on black? Uh, it's like the 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 world. <laughs> blue on black. Mm, if if no, there's orange, orange on black. Yeah. Orange on black. Yeah, yes. and lots of text. Yes. Although, I'm, wait, Brian Spencer's Hacker Evolution Time Dimensions. Am I on something else? Yes. Okay. Um, Hacker Evolutions is a is a. Uh, is a, an extremely low key game that has a very in depth storyline. Um, honestly, the uh, there are no graphics in this game. It is blue on black. <laughs> you get a map. That is it. It shows you where all the computer systems are in the world. That way, you can bounce off of them and use it to hack into um, other computer systems. But the overall story is you're a hacker who is being recruited by two different companies. Uh, On one side of the coin is a company that wants to stop the other company from destroying the world. And uh, both sides are recruiting you uh, simultaneously. And you can actually do missions for both companies that sabotage something that you have already done in another company for the other company. Am I seeing this right? Am I seeing seeing they, they, they actually have like Windows desktops that you're hacking into? Yeah. Wow. So I mean it, it's an ex, it's an, an extremely low key game, uh, but it is addicting and in depth. Mm-hmm. So I think that because of the, because graphics wise it would never make a, a good movie. Um, I think a book though would be amazing. Uh, from the chat room, we do we have some uh, answers to this as well. Uh, Zero Two K thinks that Braid could be a good book. What's that? Oh yeah, Braid. Yeah, Braid. Um, you guys have played Braid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you get into it, like, I mean, I know it's like a puzzle game, but uh, beyond that, it's like, like, if you actually read through, like, the kind of story that goes yeah. with it. It's, it's like a platform puzzler. It is. It is. It's real heavy. Kind of like Fez. Kind of. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, good. Yep. We ran out of time. Wake up. We ran out of time on that one. Um, uh, next question. Best game ending. Uh, I'll start this one off. Um, I have a hard time remembering how some video games end. Yeah, that's what I was trying um, to think of. Some. Yeah, however, I, I never forget how Portal 2 ended. 
exactly. <laughs> um, the the uh, cutscenes at the end of Portal Two um, were just amazing, and the way they quote uh, finished unquote the story uh, was fantastic as well. So that is up there in one of the best game endings. Uh, Bobby, um, I have a couple. Um, Red Red Dead Redemption. Uh, that was an amazing ending. Uh, not to spoil anything, but what happens to the main character is awesome. Just amazing. Um, another one would be Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, that one was phenomenal, too. The The end fight with the boss is just amazing, and you find out her reasoning for doing what she did. and It was really cinematic. Uh, Frank has my other one, too, so I'll let him take this for the next one. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, the one that I share with Bobby is Batman Arkham City. Just because how you were saying that you'll always remember the ending of Portal 2. Yeah. You'll always remember the time the Joker actually died. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Oh, hey, no. I'm on asylum. Yeah, time out. Time oh. out. Time out. Stop. Time out. All right. Um, from this point forward, my rule is going into effect. Okay. <laughs> if the game has been out for more than 90 days... <laughs> you cannot complain about spoilers. Okay. Because if you were going to get the game, and it was that important to you, you'd have gotten it already. Well, then I could spoil Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> exactly. If you want to, go for it. <laughs> All right, continue, okay. Frank. But now that we have that ground that ground rule laid out. Uh, the ending was so good that it made me want to go and find the interviews with the people who wrote it, and they wrote about how how are we going to kill the Joker? Because that was one of their ideas from the beginning, and they didn't want to do it for the shock value. They wanted to do it just to make that much different of a storyline from any other Batman story that's ever been told in his however many decade uh, story. And they did just they did it exactly how it, how it would happen Is if it? it happened in the comics. That's exactly what the Joker would do to cause his own death by destroying his own antidote. Uh, that one, and then my other listing that I had is the most recent Mortal Kombat game. And maybe not so much just the ending, but just the way that um, those who follow Mortal Kombat and read about it, they know that there's a storyline that underlies everything, but it's never really a prominent part of the game. Right. And they have a challenge series in Mortal Kombat that just takes you through everything from whenever Raiden selects you uh, Liu Kang and Sonya Blade and Johnny Cage all the way up to Raiden's final showdown with Shao Kahn uh, whenever he's trying to er whenever he's trying to merge uh, Earth Realm and I uh, can't think of what the other realm's called but um, but it's just an excellent storyline with a fantastic ending alright so, yeah those are my two fantastic. Going, going back to Arkham City real quick uh Batman carrying the Joker out of Arkham City is one of the coolest images yes. in a video game. It's amazing. And especially since they give you the concept art of what they wanted it to look like, too. Yeah. All right. Well, we have the uh, first three questions out of the way, so you know what time that is. Boss, boss fight! This week's this week's uh, boss fight, also given to us by uh, Frank is what's the best and worst weapons in a video game? Best and worst weapons in a video game. Go ahead, Frank. Okay. For me, the best weapons in a video game, um, just for usability's sake, the BR-55 Battle Rifle from Halo. Because it's good without the scope, it's good with the scope. You have the ammo counter right in the center of the screen, so you don't even need to look in the corner of the screen just to see your ammo. It's just an excellent all-around uh, good weapon, and it packs a punch, too. Um, that uh, The Hidden Blades from Assassin's Creed, just because I think that that's a good original idea, it's something I'm trying to figure out how to build because that's what engineers <laughs> do in their free time. And my other one, uh, going back to Vigilante 8, John Torx Jefferson had the special weapon of mounting a gigantic subwoofer on the back of a Lincoln. And what that did was put out sound waves that did damage, 
but more than anything, you could just annoy the crap out of people by launching their school bus or their spaceship or whatever over mountains just by hitting your subwoofer. <laughs> bet, you I can throw the, bet you I can throw the school bus over a mountain. <laughs> and what's your worst? Uh, my worst is going to be the plasma pistol from Halo. I've tried multiple times, tried to get it to work. It just doesn't. I have I, to agree with you. That is, uh, it is worthless. I, no, it does serve one purpose. You can use it as a club whenever you just try to hit <laughs> someone with it. You try to use it as a gun, it's worthless. Try to use it as a club. It does serve a purpose, though. <laughs> Bobby, um, my two—I have two, two, uh, one ones I chose for the best. Um, the iconic Master Sword in the Legend of Zelda. Not gonna argue I mean, you, with you there. You, you can't go wrong with it. I have it, one the, hanging on my wall. Just the look—the look of the sword, what it does, just awesome. Um, another one that can never miss: the blue shell in Mario Kart. Oh, Always that, takes out the first place car. That that shell annoys the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, but when you have it though, it's the best thing in the world. I'm never not in first place. <laughs> what, I know, you what, have to be what, like in sixth. Yeah, or lower. When, when I'm playing with the computer, I'm never not in first place. That means every half a lap, I'm getting nailed with one of these blue shells. But it's effective. It is. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Sorry. Um, <laughs> for the worst, I have uh, top spin from Mega Man Three. <laughs> the reason I chose this is because you have to hit the enemy and you have to time it exactly right and a lot of the times you just get hit and it's like the most frustrating weapon he just spins that's it um another one I I, I didn't I didn't write it down here but uh, I just remembered anybody remember the video game on Nintendo called Asti Annex mm -hmm. yes there was a an axe and a sword and does anybody remember the third weapon in the trio of weapons you ha you can have in that game? No. A spear. That was the worst <laughs> weapon of all time. A, a spear in any game is bad. It was terrible. And, and I know you guys are going to hate me for it, but it's kind of like the whip in Castlevania. Uh, like, while it works, <laughs> like, they make it work in the game... That could never actually be an effective weapon in any yeah. circumstance. I'm sorry. Talk to Indiana Jones. No. Talk to his face. <laughs> I will say it to, it to <laughs> Master Jones's face. What? Got some chat stuff here. Um, following up with you guys. Ciro says, best hyper beam in Super Metroid. Worst shrinker in Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> Uh, Juggler John says you don't know how to play play right. Always play two players and always break when you hear the blue shell. <laughs> Throwing that out there. So, back to you. Break so it can hit you faster and then you can get going again. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, um, I, I didn't actually put a best in the documents um, because I was just gonna go to a, uh, a Legend of Zelda weapon or something. Because, um, I mean... Those weapons are the best of all time. Yep. Also, in that list of best weapons ever, and you guys can argue this all you want, um, but in the end, I'm going to be right. The throwing knives from Modern Warfare. Oh, yeah. The There's throwing so knives fun. from Call of Duty Modern Warfare yep. are one of the greatest weapons of all time. And I say this because you get none greater satisfaction uh -huh. than when you hit someone in the face with a throwing knife. You missed a ballistic knife in Black Ops. That yeah. was fun. But yes, I, there is no greater satisfaction than nailing someone in the face with a throwing knife. <laughs> and uh, my pick for the all-time dumbest weapons ever in a video game are those guns that Barrett uses in Final Fantasy VII. I hate those damn things. <laughs> and, and I realize that, you know, it, it's a futuristic um, RPG that has, uh, like, sword fighting tendencies. But no, I'm sorry. Bad. Bad Final Fantasy. You know, if I can throw out there, I'm a big fan of Fluffy's <laughs> Revenge. But, and uh, <laughs> shoot many robots. But not quite as big of a fan as the... Uh, Gnome launchers. Did, did you bring it up? Like, I, I I didn't bring it up yet, but let, uh, let the people see it. I'll, I'll let the people see it um, here on video here. Uh, uh, but but too many robots has so many good good weapons. Yes, 
Um, I, I didn't bring up any of those, A, because I didn't think of any of them, but B, um, they have so many awesome, hilarious weapons that are ineffective, but funny. And you want to use them, even yes. though you know you're not going to get any advantage through this level by having this equipped. Yes. Um, the, the gnoming missile doesn't actually hit anything ever. Well, it did. No, it, it, it actually gets the job done, but it's it's horribly inaccurate. Uh, it, what happens is you fire a rocket launcher, it shoots out a, a gnome, like a garden gnome, and then they fly willy-nilly around the screen until they explode. So the chances of you actually hitting something are slim to none. I got one. The sheep ball from uh, Worms. Oh! <laughs> the sheep bomb was amazing! And the, uh, the holy hand grenade? Yeah. What's oh. this now? Holy hand grenade? I, it, I don't include games like that because 90% of the time, every weapon is amazing. Yeah. In its own special little way. I'm amazed how many things come up with gnoming missiles <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Gnomes are popular. <laughs> There are not too many robots. Okay. Anyways, go ahead. So, um, all right. That's it? Yep. All right. So, um, that was, uh, Insert Coin to Begin Presents. Let's play episode two. Uh, this week's challenge, remember, is Dope Wars. Uh, it is a free download on your Android devices, or you can find it on any computer if you just go to Google. Um, it is a highly popular game. The fact that you guys haven't played it still... Still amuses me. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, go play this week's challenge. Uh, you can visit the website. Let us know what you think. Insert coin to begin com. You can follow us all on Twitter at Fuzzwad, at Bobby F. J. Town, at Chachi Says. We're on Google Plus, Facebook, um, everywhere. We are everywhere. Follow us on Twitter. We got the account back. It's at Insert Coin TB. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching and listening to Let's Play. And we'll see you next week.